Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our sequences and series series and we're going to be talking about the alternating series test. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We're going to of course start off with a series. So here we have the series k plus 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k squared. So let's go ahead and talk about what this series looks like. So first when we plug in 1 we get negative 1 power of 2. That's going to be positive. So here we just get a 1. That's going to be minus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth minus 1 16th plus 1 over 25 and that's going to go on forever right so let's go ahead and think about this in terms of partial sums because we want to know if this converges or if it diverges so first let's go ahead and take the first partial sum of course that's just going to be the first term it's just going to be equal to one so our first partial sum this is going to be our n is going to go up to one so this is our s sub one now let's take our second partial sum so here we're going to have one minus one fourth which is equal to three fourths so what happens is we decrease, so we go down a fourth and we end up with our second partial sum, that's going to be S2, right? So first we go all the way up to one, then we subtract off one fourth in order to get our second partial sum. Now our third partial sum, that's going to be three fourths, and then we take the next term. So that's going to be plus one ninth. That is actually equal to 31 over 36. So what happens here is we go from our second partial sum, and we're going to add on 1 ninth, right? And so this ends up at our third partial sum right here, right? And then our next one, we're going to take 31 over 36. And now we're subtracting off 1 16th. And I'm not going to, you know, math that out. But here we go from our third partial sum and we subtract off minus 1 16th. And we end up somewhere right here, right? And notice what is happening here. We are alternating, but notice that we're adding and subtracting smaller and smaller numbers. So here our partial sum at n equals 5, that's going to be 31 over 36 minus 1 16th. And then we're going to take that next term, so plus 1 over 25. So now we're like, we're barely going up. We're going up plus 1 over 25, and we're ending up somewhere right here. So notice what's happening. These values are getting very, very close to each other, right? And they're going to be converging. But why is it the case? Why does that work out to be converging? So let's go ahead and talk about it. The alternating series test, so we have some summation. We have negative 1 to the k plus 1. That could be negative 1 to the k, right? We just have that it's alternating between positive and negative. We have that it converges provided the first requirement. The terms of the series are non-increasing, so they are not getting any bigger in magnitude, right? So we have our a k plus 1, right? That's going to be the next term is always less than or equal to a k. That was the term right before it. And this is going to be for k greater than some index k. So maybe that doesn't happen with the first few terms, but at some point, all of those values are non-increasing. The second condition that we need to have is that when we take the limit as k approaches infinity of our a sub k, that needs to go to zero. So let's go ahead and talk about our series. What is our a sub k? Our a sub k is going to be 1 over k squared, right? The alternating portion is where we have that negative 1 to the k plus 1. Our actual like a sub k that we're working with is where we don't have that. So here, let's go ahead and talk about it if it's increasing or decreasing. So here, you can think of it as a function, right? So if we have a function 1 over x squared, we can prove that it's going to be decreasing. And we can do that using the first derivative test. So f prime of x is going to be, that's going to be negative 2 over x cubed, right? And we have that we can set this equal to 0 and solve for the critical values. In this case, it doesn't have any critical values. And f prime of x is going to be negative or less than 0 for all x values. And this tells us that f of x is going to be decreasing for all x values. Or if you want to go back to our sequence, we have that a sub k is decreasing for our index, k greater than or equal to 1. So yay, we have that. We have that it's decreasing. You could also have non-increasing, right? And that's one way you can prove it. You can think of it as a function, right? We also need to show that the limit is going to go to zero. So we have the limit as k approaches infinity of our a sub k, 1 over k squared. That for sure converges to zero. So we have, since both of the conditions are met, this series converges by the alternating series test. Let's go ahead and try another one. We have the summation k equals 2 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times natural log of k all divided by k. So let's go ahead and find our a sub k. That is going to be the natural log of k divided by k. I know it's an alternating series because we have that negative 1 to the k. So the first thing we need to do is show that it's not increasing. And we're going to do that in the exact same format. 
f of x is equal to, that's going to be the natural log of x divided by x. So let's go ahead and find f prime of x. So here we can go ahead and use quotient rule. We have the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all divided by the denominator squared. So this is just going to be 1 minus natural log of x divided by x squared. And we want to go ahead and set this equal and solve for critical values because we want to know where it's increasing or decreasing, right? So here I just need 1 minus natural log of x to be equal to 0. And notice here that the denominator x cannot be equal to 0. But that's totally fine because our index is starting at 2, so we don't really need to worry about it. So here we have 1 is equal to the natural log of x. Have e to the both sides, we get e is equal to x, right? And that, remember, is approximately 2.71. So let's go ahead and set up our little number line here. We have e, we need to go ahead and plug in test values to our first derivative. Let's go ahead and try like 1, for example. If we plug in 1, we get 1 minus the natural log of 1 divided by 1 squared. That is going to be 1, right? And so we have that it's increasing until we hit e. Let's go ahead and see what happens after we hit e. Let's go ahead and plug in like 3, for example. Here we get f prime of 3 is equal to, that's going to be 1 minus the natural log of 3 all divided by 3 squared. Something you should know is that after e, that natural log of 3 is going to be greater than 1. We have that natural log of e is equal to 1, and so if you think about the function, after it hits that value of e, it's for sure going to be greater than 1, right? Because all of these values are greater than 1. And so that's going to result in a negative value. And so that means it's decreasing after e. So this tells us that our a sub k is decreasing for k values greater than or equal to 3. And remember that we start at 2, and that is okay for it to be decreasing later on in the sequence. If we go back to the actual like test, it says that k is greater than some index n. For us, our index is 3. So don't worry about that. If that happens to you, we have it as decreasing or non-increasing, right? So we're happy with that. We showed it. Let's go ahead and talk about the second condition. We want to take the limit as k approaches infinity of, that's going to be natural log of k divided by k. One way you can do this is think about it. So k is going to grow more quickly than natural log of k, which is going to make it go to zero. You could also use L'Hopital's rule. So this approaches infinity over infinity. We end up with 1 over k, right? We get 1 over k divided by 1. That is also going to approach zero. So you can do either way, L'Hopital's or without it, and you will end up in the same solution. And we have that this series converges by the alternating series test, right? Since it met both conditions, we are A-OK. -okay. Let's go ahead and try another one. So we actually need to find what the series is equal to. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the first term. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 over 1, right? And this is going to be the summation. K equals 1 to infinity. If we start at 1, I have 2 in the numerator. So that's going to be K plus 1 divided by K. And I also have that this is alternating between positive and negative. So I need to have negative 1 to the k. And here, if I plug in 1, I would get a negative value. So I need to have k plus 1 in order to get a positive value for our first term. So let's see. Our k is equal to, that's going to be k plus 1 divided by k. And we can actually simplify that to 1 plus 1 over k. So remember what we need to do first. We need to show that the terms are non-increasing. So let's go ahead and think of it as a function. f of x is equal to 1 plus 1 over x. So then f prime of x is equal to, that's going to be negative 1 over x squared. If I wanted to solve for critical values, it doesn't have any. If I were to plug in any x value, it would be negative. So we have f of x is always decreasing. So let's go ahead and think about it as a sub k. That means our a sub k is decreasing or non-increasing. And that's going to be for our k values that we actually want. We had our summation starting at 1, so we're going to say k greater than or equal to 1. So we have our first condition is met. Yes, it is. And of course, our next condition is the limit, right? So let's go ahead and take the limit as k approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over k. This is going to be 1 plus 0, which is equal to 1. So remember, we want this limit to equal 0. We do not want it to equal 1, which means the alternating series fails. It does not tell us if it diverges or not. It just means we cannot use the alternating series test. And actually, what I always suggest is if you get a number, go ahead and try the divergence test, right? So if alternating series isn't working, try divergence. Here, we take the limit as k approaches infinity, but of our entire series, that's a divergence test. 
And this is going to approach both positive and negative one. So it's going to be alternating between positive and negative one. But the divergence test says if it doesn't equal zero, it diverges. Negative one and one, both are not equal to zero. So that tells us this diverges by the divergence test, right? So if the alternating series test fails, divergence test. But that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.